All right, I get it. I've been talking a lot about the Roadcaster Pro. My first three episodes I've ever created of Creator Thoughts have all been about the Roadcaster Pro, and today we're going to talk about it more because I recorded 10 episodes today of Grammar School, my Instagram podcast, and I want to tell you about it. So let's start right now. All right, folks, I'm Todd. Live. I'm outside the office today in the backyard. Nice Southern California weather. I am a live streamer, a podcaster. I've got two daily podcasts with over a thousand episodes. Actually, I think I'm pushing 1,200. So again, today we're going to talk about my initial thoughts of the Roadcaster Pro after having recorded 10 episodes this morning of my podcast, Grammar School. And of course, if you're interested in this piece of equipment, which a lot of people are right now, or you're just thinking about podcasting and dipping your toe in the water, you're going to want to hear what I have to say about this unit after recording 10 podcasts today. I've already done three videos on this subject matter as I struggled through getting it hooked up in my office the way I wanted to hook it up. I ended up not being able to incorporate it completely into my office as I thought I would. I put links down below to the other three videos. And before I tell you about my experience, be sure if you find value in any of these videos, share them, subscribe, like, whatever the platform that you happen to be watching this on, whatever they offer, hey, throw a shout out, throw a share, leave a comment, whatever. Okay, first off, it's super easy to use. On off button on the back, when it's powered on, you hit record to record, you hit record to stop record. It's that simple. If you wanna play sound effects that either are preloaded into it by Rode or you wanna load in your own sound effects, hit a button, sound effect plays. It's awesome. For the sound effects to be audible, this dial has to be set where you want it and that button cannot be pushed because it will shut off all the other channels. Presuming you're plugged in with an XLR mic in the back, you're gonna want the XLR mic channel on and you want neither of these buttons pushed because if you have the mute button pushed, that line is not working. If you have the ear button pushed, only that line is working. Of course, if this is plugged in, you're gonna have a nice set of bars that tell you the status of your audio, if you're peaking, if you're not. Speaking to that, when I pull the audio file out of this and put it in an audition for a little bit of additional compression, I found that on those 10 episodes, I was peaking or clipping. So I have actually set my dial lower and in the settings here you can set the audio input the gain to get get it ideal it might take me a couple weeks to get it to where i exactly want it but i'm sure i'm going to be able to dial it in nicely files are stored in a wave format wav i wish you had the option of choosing mp3 format but you don't and if it is offered i haven't found it yet but wave files are fine it's better quality i slip the wave file into audition add some additional compression and some effects and save it as an mp3 file before I upload it into Simplecast, my preferred podcast host. And I've got my headset plugged in down here in the bottom so I can hear it. I can adjust the volume over here so I can hear it. I mean, it really is that simple, folks. So I've got some thoughts on this unit that I want to share with you. First off, there's no pause button, okay? It's important when you're recording a podcast, particularly if you want to try to eliminate the the chances that you're going to have to spend a lot of time editing, it's important to have a pause button on whatever device you're using. For whatever reason, they didn't put a pause button on this. I'm told that in a firmware update, they're going to add a pause button, which will be available on the screen while you're recording your podcast, but it's not available now. It should have been a separate button as big as the record button. The importance of pausing. Let's say that you feel a sneeze coming on. You want to hit pause so you can have your sneeze, hit unpause, and the recording continues. Since there's no pause feature, you're stuck either sneezing during the show and leaving it in the broadcast, which I'm fine with that. Personally, I'm fine with that. Or you have to take your audio file and edit it, okay? And one of two things. One, you sneeze while you're recording and you have to edit that out, which I think is the easier thing to do or you end the recording, sneeze, start a new recording, and now you've got to splice two audio clips together, two separate files. I hate that idea. I believe in treating podcasting like it's live video. When you record, whatever happens, happens. If you sneeze, you sneeze. If you have a pause button, it allows you to get rid of the sneeze easily because you pause, you sneeze, you unpause, you keep talking. But if there's no ability to pause, in my opinion, You sneeze, you excuse yourself, and you move on. Your audience isn't going to mind, trust me. And for now, that's about all I'm going to say about this. It's an awesome piece of equipment. I love it. 
Do I wish I could incorporate it completely into my live video studio and podcast studio and have it do everything I want it to do? Yes, but I'm not, the customer that they're thinking of with this unit isn't doing all that stuff. That being said, look at all these jacks on the back. This is an output for a speaker. Like if you wanna send that to some sort of a speaker system, these are outputs for headphones. Okay, there's no inputs. These are all three and a quarter millimeter jacks. Why not have two three and a quarter millimeter input jacks and have two more lines? You could easily add the controls to the front of this panel for two more lines and give people a little more flexibility in the ways in which they bring in their audio. Not everybody's gonna have an XLR. Even though there are XLR adapters for just about everything, I tried to bring in audio from another computer using the XLR. It did not work. In the end, folks, I love this thing. It's a wonderful piece of equipment, $600, worth every penny. I'll probably do a more formal review at some point where I've got screenshots and I've got the power on, and I, but I just wanted to do a quick creator thoughts for all of my channels to get my initial thoughts and impressions out there so those of you who are on the fence can jump in and get this thing delivered to you quick. And you know one thing? Look at this. This, this little shelf system, this makes it great for showing off on a video. I can hold that all day long and show you what I need to show you, and it's right here in our faces.